Hello again. Uh, this presentation that um, I bring to you today is related to SDG implementation and UNESCO Biosphere Reserves. Now, as you know, um, UNESCO and the UN system as a whole is operating within uh, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and um, looking to uh, implement and help uh, member, member states implement the 17 uh, SDGs, um, Sustainable Development Goals, which you see on the screen. Now, the SDGs uh, uh, is a little bit of a different approach from previous approaches that the UN had undertaken through the Millennium Development Goals, for example, because the SDGs, although they, it seems here on the screen that you have 17 very separate um, programs and lines of work, in fact, the whole idea of the SDGs is to ensure that uh, um, the uh, member states um, and uh, the world community act in an integrated manner. So integrating all these different aspects of sustainable development uh, into their work, um, because as you will see in uh, subsequent slides, uh, many of these SDGs are very much interconnected and can't be achieved one without the other. And this is obviously also the case for biosphere reserves, as I noted in my, one of my previous presentations. Um, the biosphere reserves are sites for sustainable development sites uh, to implement multidisciplinary actions, uh, bringing in the sciences, the social sciences, culture, education, uh, to achieve the goals uh, that we have set out for, our, for ourselves as a, as a MAP community. And there's another way of looking at it, which I really, I really like, is through the five Ps. And I think uh, this also mirrors quite a bit uh, the MAP approach, uh, because MAP uh, relates to man and women and the biosphere and how uh, they act and interact with nature. So it's very much a people-centered approach. There's also the economic aspect, uh, prosperity, ensuring uh, the promotion of jobs within the biosphere reserves. Uh, obviously for UNESCO, uh, the promotion of peace is a very important uh, uh, topic in terms of the, from, from our the constitution, and, and which says that in the minds, that peace needs to come from the minds of men and, and, and women. Um, and obviously partnerships is something very, very key for the MAP program. It's a, it's a bottom up uh, approach program, uh, looking to work with all different stakeholders and within bias reserves to achieve the goals that we set out. And finally, planet, the last, uh, the fifth P or the first P, depending on how you look at it, and is uh, obviously key to, to the SDGs. You see many of the SDGs are related to environmental goals and, um, and also key to uh, the MAP, which is, uh, as I've noted, uh, one, of, one of the key areas of MAP that's trained by biodiversity to ensure that our, our planet's natural resources are, 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 well, uh, are well managed and of course the climate, climate action for future generations. Now, how do we review these, uh, these SDGs and agenda for 2030? It's already been a few years since uh, they've been adopted. Uh, where are we at uh, with that? And, and we're looking at that, the UN system and member states looking at that, both at the global level and at the regional level. Um, and also looking specifically this year, since uh, we've gone through COVID-19, how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected and the, the world development has affected the achievement of the 2030 agenda and the delivery, delivery excuse me, of the sustainable development goals. And we at UNESCO in the region and in, in, in Europe and in Central Asia, in this case, are very much involved with the regional forum on sustainable development, which uh, UNECE um, is organizing in, uh, in March of 2021. Um, and uh, both at the global level and at the regional level, they will be looked at clusters, uh, which you can see on the screen, um, looking at health, well-being, sustainable food systems, growth, employment, technology, innovation, sustainable consumption and production, and finally, sort of across the uh, where we look at SDGs uh, 16 and 17. Um, and as I noted uh, before, um, our world is a different world today. Uh, we've lived through uh, almost a year now of a uh, um, global pandemic. Um, how are these goals and how is the agenda 2030 been affected by that? That's something that uh, we're working uh, very intently on and trying to figure out also as well as we hopefully exit the, the pandemic, how we can adapt our programs, our work uh, to ensure that we uh, promote a more equitable, sustainable uh, development as we, as we move forward. 
Um, and uh, yeah, as I noted, the, there's a, quite a bit of work that's been done specifically on some on some SDGs and on some targets. Um, and some work has already been done to try to assess where we are with that. And one of those areas of importance to the MAB program is uh, biodiversity. Uh, and uh, fortunately, we're quite quite a ways behind uh, both uh, the SDG indicators and the actually biodiversity targets. So it's something we really want to look at going forward and see how we can contribute to that through our uh, through our biosphere reserves. So I'm going to go uh, relatively quickly through uh, some examples of how biosphere reserves uh, work on specific SDGs, and I would encourage you to go onto the MAP website to get a better um, uh, indication and more details and, uh, through the, the crowd to share videos that are there of how different um, biosphere reserves are implementing SDGs. But as you'll see, they go, you know, all, all different SDGs are being um, implemented within biosphere reserves. Uh, the no poverty one, uh, there's an interesting example of a biosphere reserve in, in Madagascar where they're working on beekeeping, sustainable coastal fisheries, poultry, and rice farming um, to ensure that uh, the local populations that come out of, of poverty are able to earn a living. Uh, zero hunger, uh, quite a few biosphere reserves working on food security, but here there's an example in South, South Africa of work that's been done on food security in, in times of COVID-19 is very interesting. Uh, good, good health and well-being, biosphere reserves are sites for uh, you know, the interaction between humans and, uh, and, and the biosphere. So um, uh, these are sites for, for good health and well-being. And then there's an example in Lanzarote of uh, the communities trying to promote their well-being through reduction of waste. Uh, notably plastic in the biosphere reserve. Uh, quality education, and, and, and not, uh, not, again, and obviously a cross-cutting issue for biosphere reserves. Uh, education is a key aspect uh, as per UNESCO you know, guidelines and lab guidelines, uh, ESD in particular, and that's something we'll take a look at in, in the third week of our program. Gender equality, again, a cross-cutting priority for UNESCO uh, and for the MAB program. Uh, here an example of work that is done in Spain, uh, where there's a plan for gender equality and sustainable world development. And so that's a choice. Um, water, another cross cutting uh, SDG uh, that really goes across all biosphere reserves as well. Um, and here's an example of uh, the project in Lake Chad, a geoparks project, uh, looking to um, ensure that the you know, uh, water resources management are, are managed and, and water resources are managed in that. And appropriate way to into account early warning systems for droughts and floods, in particular. Affordable clean energy, again, another important topic. Um, an interesting example in uh, uh, the National Network of Austrian Biosphere Reserves, which we can take a look at. Uh, decent community economic growth, again, as I had referred to earlier, a very important aspect of biosphere reserves is ensuring uh, that there is economic growth. Uh, within biosphere reserves and with the job creation, sustainable job creation occurs there. Uh, industry innovation and infrastructure, SDG 9, a uh, very important SDG for UNESCO, which is working towards science programs to ensure that uh, <coughs> the innovation and science technology and innovation uh, uh, contributes to the SDGs. Here's an example of the Northga North Biosphere Reserve. Uh, uh, we're, we're trying to go towards a, uh, a smart island approach for their biosphere reserve. Uh, reducing inequality is another priority for the UN system, um, you know, leaving no one behind. Here are an interesting example of how the Fetsway Nation uh, in Canada created uh, their own the biosphere reserves, the uh, Fetsway Biosphere Reserve, which they managed, which they designed, which they now manage. Um, sustainable cities and communities, another key aspect of, uh, of MAB's work. And not only working in cities, but working in, in local communities to ensure that um, uh, this, this interesting example in Italy in Ovidium, uh, do zero kilometer uh, work with food, working with the local restaurants um, to, to, to promote uh, local, local production and, um, and uh, zero emission if possible um, at the local level. Responsible consumption and production here again, and something that's supposed to be that's being promoted in, in most biosphere reserves, working with local uh, producers uh, to ensure that uh, the consumption and production is sustainable. Here, an example in the middle, but there are many, many more examples that we come to work in biosphere reserves. 
uh, climate action again, this is across the uh, area on multiple biospheres. Here's we're working on specific climate uh, projects across Europe as well. Um, here's an example in, in, uh, in Germany of a, a biosphere reserve that has done a 100% climate protection master plan and, and, uh, and committed to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 95% uh, in 2050. A uh, large flow of water here again, um, and this applies to many biosphere reserves, uh, the island biosphere reserves, of which there are a uh, network, um, and also coastal biosphere reserves, of which there are many notable regions in the, in the Mediterranean. Um, life on land, uh, an obvious SDG, which applies to um, biosphere reserves um, uh, across the board. Pretty much every biosphere reserve has actions related to this SDG. Uh, here uh, is an example of uh, France and Germany of the so-called the, the Gardening for Biodiversity program. Um, we're um, working with residents and communities to make room for wild plants and animals in their gardens. Peace, uh, justice, um, and strong institutions here. And some key examples uh, relate to transboundary biosphere reserves. And here we have an example of the Bosque Pass Biosphere Reserve in Ecuador and Peru, uh, where a uh, both sides uh, at the border are working together um, to promote peace uh, in an area that has been, 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 been quite a lot of conflict in the past uh, 20 to 40 years. And so, biosphere mm -hmm. reserves really play a role in promoting peace and justice. Uh, and, uh, and finally, partnerships. Uh, here, there's an example on the International Center on Mediterranean Biosphere Reserves. But I think partnerships, again, something that we have in all, all biosphere reserves, have been there before biosphere reserves all have. And, and take on a bottom-up approach, working with uh, multiple stakeholders, uh, ensuring that everybody has a voice uh, in the management of the sites, um, and uh, uh, the partnerships um, that will occur to make sure that the, the other sustainable development goals uh, are being achieved within, within biosphere reserves. I'm going to leave you with a few references, basically uh, looking through at the UNESCO map. Uh, uh, website and also the UN website on sustainable development goals. I would encourage you to take a good look at those and also, as I said, uh, listen to the uh, Proud to Share videos, uh, which are on the, the SDG page. They're just um, all the different examples that I just showed you are there. Um, and so you can listen to the people that are living in the biosphere reserves and give you uh, an even clearer idea of what they're doing through the uh, SDG. And uh, again, I'd like to thank you for, uh, thank you for your attention. Um, I hope uh, this was an interesting presentation and I look forward to, to further discussion and further discussing the, these issues with you uh, uh, for our discussion group at the end of the week. Thank you.